Hi, my name is Sylvia, and I'm the chief happiness officer in the most important project, my own life. But I am not a standalone being. I am connected. We are all connected. We all live among people, and whether we want it or not, we communicate with one another. We communicate even if we are doing nothing. And I strongly believe that meaningful relations is something that brings happiness to our life. The story of this TEDx talk is how to communicate in a way that enables cooperation and compassion. So I'm connected to a number of people, my three kids, my partner, my parents, ex-husband, friends, colleagues, so on and so forth. All those connections form different kinds of relations. Within those relations, I experience a multitude of actions and exchange thousands of words. I received the first message even before opening my eyes. And it's like, mommy, mommy, uh -huh. mommy, can you hear me? Yes, I can, but I don't know if I want to. And the last sentence is so true most of the time. I would so much like to communicate only when, how, and with whom I want to, and make it as smooth and easy as possible. So let me tell you how I do it. So first of all, I can choose my reaction to whatever I experience. And let me invite you to my living room that is often a mess, remember those three kids, and imagine that I have just came back after that exhausting meeting. And the last thing I want is to be surrounded by him sitting on the sofa, <clears throat> things scattered around, and them shouting everywhere. And so I have this choice. I can choose my reaction. And I, when I go for option one, I start to look for those who blame. And it looks like that. What a mess! Like, what have you been doing the whole day? You're, you're so lazy! And he's like, uh, mm, lazy? Like, you've entered without even saying hello. And like, hello? Is hello the most important thing for you now? And you know, the ping pong may go forever. Okay, so I go for option two. And then I start looking for blame inside of me. This is my fault. This is how I've raised them. Like, I'm a horrible person, a terrible mother, and a difficult partner. And really, that does not gives, give me the power to like, communicate, cooperate, or being like, compassionate. And for a long time, I was automatically uh, choosing my reaction just between these two options. I was either looking for someone to blame or looking for fault inside of me. At home, at school, at work, we as humans have been trained so well to judge, criticize, blame, or otherwise communicate in a way that creates distance among people. Fortunately, some time ago, I discovered a language that is not assigning faults, is not deciding who's to blame, or what is good or bad, right or wrong. This language is nonviolent communication developed by Marshall Rosenberg. And it is not about physical abuse at all. The objective of nonviolent communication is to establish relations based on honesty and empathy. And what he observed, like uh, Marshall Ro Rosenberg was a psychologist, a mediator, and a founder for nonviolent communication, but for the Center of no for Nonviolent Communication. What he observed is that uh, there is, no matter how different we are, there is always the same in me and the same in you. And the things that we have in common are universal needs, like the needs for like the needs for safety, sustenance, creativity, rest, empathy, 
community, and last but not least, autonomy. There are signs that direct us towards our needs, and these signs are feelings. When we feel happy, satisfied, and full of energy, that means that our needs are satisfied. When we feel sad, depressed, uncomfortable, it may mean that there is a need that is waiting to be fulfilled. The only person who is responsible and capable of fulfilling my need is me, myself. Only I can find a strategy for fulfilling my need. And conflicts often arise when we get attached to one and only strategy for fulfilling a need and we stop looking for other options. And there was another psychologist mentioned here today, Maslow, and he put those needs in a hierarchy. Rosenberg believed that all needs are equal. Like my needs are equally important as your needs. And like, so they are, mm, <laughs> uh, my needs, and like the, the needs motivate everything we do or say. So that's why I don't listen to words people say, and it is not because I don't care about them or the things they want to say, like quite the opposite. I really care about people and the things they, and like th they want to say, and meaningful relations is something that I care for in my life the most. That is why I never just focus on words. I rather, focus to see the needs that are beyond them. Okay, so now let's come back to my living room. It is still a mess as options one and two did not work. Fortunately, I've broadened my choices and I can choose option three, self-empathy. In this option, I take a deep breath or even free, and try to connect to what I'm feeling and needing at the particular moment. And it works, it may look like that. It's like, you know, I'm feeling uh, like annoyed because I'm really needing somewhere to rest after that exhausting meeting, and could you please help me with getting the things done? And please say yes only if you want to, otherwise I can like find some other solutions. So here I am not looking for anyone to blame. I am trying to connect to what I am feeling and needing in this particular moment. And I am also open for other solutions, for some other strategies for fulfilling this need of rest in this situation. There is still another option, option four, and I can empathize with him sitting on the sofa and I'm trying to guess what may be important to him at this particular moment. And then it, it looks like that. It's like, mm, you know, mm, I can see you sitting uh, at the sofa. Like, is it that you're uh, feeling tired because you need um, some support with the kids? And he's like, mm, no, we are playing hide and seek. Maybe you'd like to join us. And I say, mm, no, I'm, I'm really needing some space to, to rest, so maybe we could like, work it out together. And see, I'm not looking for anyone to blame. I'm trying to, to get in touch with the things that are important to him. And the next step would be finding the strategy for fulfilling mine and his needs in this particular situation. Okay, great. I can, uh, I can choose my reaction to whatever I experience, but I cannot predict the reaction of the other person. He or she may go for option one and start like labeling me or judging me, criticizing. It is really difficult listening and such words may hurt, but and, and it's really like difficult not to bounce back a label, judgment, or blame. But by doing so, 
I'm getting involved in a vicious circle of language that is not creating cooperation and compassion and certainly is not resolving a problem. So when I, uh, so I, I also remind myself that anything people say, they say about themselves and their needs. But by using a language of judgments and labels, they are doing it in a tragic way, a way that is far from building cooperation. So when I hear that I am lazy, there may be a need for mutuality, appreciation, or maybe companionship that is waiting to be fulfilled. Or when I hear that I am stupid, <coughs> there may be a need for understanding, self-worth, or creativity that is waiting to be fulfilled. We can always choose how to react Sorry. We can choose how to react and how to experience people. Just remember, if you want cooperation and compassion, don't just listen to words. Listen for needs. Thank you so much.